Hi, and welcome to this big picture tutorial. Today we'll talk about organizing your work into portfolios and also about structuring your work, uh, your projects, your products, your initiatives in general in big picture. Now, there are different ways to organize your work into portfolios, so we'll cover a couple of them uh, and outline some of the most important pros and cons of each uh, approach. As you can see on the screen, some of my work is already organized into portfolios, so let me expand it. Now, my portfolio consists of and can consist of different types of what we refer to as boxes in um, Big Picture 8. Boxes, think of boxes are, uh, as containers, similar to projects in Jira, but um, with more flexibility. So my portfolio consists of a couple of projects. Some of them are waterfall projects, some of them are hybrid. But uh, as I've said, you can actually create a um, portfolio consisting of all these different types. So how to actually achieve this view, how to structure our work into portfolios, it's as simple as drag and drop. So let's add this agile project to my project portfolio. All I need to do is just drag and drop it uh, on the project portfolio parent uh, and confirm my action. As you can see, my ongoing Agile project is now a part of my portfolio. Now, this is the simplest approach and it provides you the most essential information about the progress uh, within your projects and within your portfolio. So I can see that almost 70% of my work items are in to-do status category while uh, almost 30% are already completed. If we look at the time tracking indicator, we can see that um, all this amount to actually 6% of the effort completed. And we have some uh, aggregated time tracking details presented here as well. Now, you might be uh, not using uh, Big Picture Enterprise as I'm doing now, so let's uh, let, let, let's have a look at the configuration and see how we can achieve a similar view using the standard version. Big Picture Enterprise does provide out of the box all these pre-configured templates, which make the configuration way easier. However, we can also modify or edit this configuration within the standard version of Big Picture. So if we go to the um, administration section of our app, you'll find the box types page where you'll have all these pre-configured templates. In the standard version, it is limited to program box, program increment and iteration. So you will not be able to create your own um, box types. Uh, unfortunately, you will not also be able to, to, to use this uh, pre-configured templates. But what you can do is to edit, edit the templates that, uh, that are already there. So how can we actually find, specify how users can build the hierarchy of their boxes? Let's have, let's go into the program box first. And if we click the uh, clickable name on the main page, uh, general basic page, you will see that I can actually define what parent types are there. So in other words, how I can build this hierarchy under what parent I can add a program box. And right now it's the portfolio uh, and the main order root box. But I can also add the same program box, program box. And right now I will be able to actually build a program uh, underneath a program and so on and so forth. There are no limits on the number of levels in this hierarchy. Of course, with the standard version, you will be required to reconfigure the box for different types, unless of course you are using big picture enterprise. So the first step is as simple as that. Now, the portfolio uh, box, let's have a closer look at the out of the box big picture enterprise portfolio portfolio box type. Uh, what is the difference between this box and other boxes? Uh, if we have a closer look at the tasks scope definition page, you will see that the scope type is set to none or aggregations only. This means that um, on the home screen or in the overview module, uh, you will see the aggregated values 
but you will not be able to define the scope. Let's have a look at that. Let's go back to the home screen and open my project portfolio box. Uh, as you can see right now, I have only two modules enabled and that's for a reason. The first one uh, is um, actually the overview. So we narrowed what uh, all the list of, of our initiative projects and so on and so forth to only these ones which are part of our portfolio. Now, by default, you will not see the board module enabled, but you can enable mo different modules. However, just to give you an example, I will enable the Gantt module and in this Gantt module, you will see a page that, that says no tasks can be displayed here. Project portfolio cannot have tasks in the scope. And the reason for that uh, is that unlike the board and roadmap modules, the Gantt and the scope and other modules are not capable of displaying tasks at this moment. So even if we try to go to the box configuration tasks, you will not even see the scope definition page. However, you can do other things. For example, uh, define quick filters here, which will be, uh, which can be inherited by lower level boxes. So how can we work around that? Um, well, if in this first uh, use case, if the high level information about the, uh, about the progress, the, the status based progress, the time tracking progress is sufficient, uh, then, then um, of course you can, uh, you can use this approach. However, if you would like to have a detailed overview of all your work within this portfolio, we need to reconfigure our portfolio and we would not be using the scope type set to, uh, to uh, aggregations only. So, so how can we work around it? I will use the program box just as it is available in the standard version. And I will rename it to portfolio for our um, US branch. Now I am required to set the start and end dates, but don't worry about it. You can uh, rename it. Uh, you can update it at any time. Uh, now, once the uh, portfolio box is created, it is set to actually its scope is set to on, which means that I can define the scope and this notice bar tells you that, okay, if you click configure scope, now you will be able to define the range of uh, of your work items that you want to work with. So let's have a look here. And the first step to, to, to actually see all my Jira issues at this portfolio level would be to specify uh, all these projects that I would like to include. Now I won't be adding all of these projects. I do have a sufficient number of tasks. So let's uh, leave it mm, this way. And already, if I go to the Gantt uh, or to the scope module, you will see that all of these 180 issues are loaded and, mm, and actually my default uh, task structure is uh, structured by project. So I can already see that I have all my, uh, all my tasks, all my projects I can fit to scale uh, and see uh, a high level information of all my work items. Now, if you want to monitor your portfolio, then we would we would need to group this uh, group these tasks uh, such that values roll up to this portfolio level. So, if you want to, you will already have this information in the overview module, but you can also uh, configure it here. For example, using a basic task, I'll call it portfolio again. Okay, and now using multi-select, I can just drag and drop this on our portfolio. So right now you'll see that I do have all these values rolled up uh, and of course I can add other, um, other fields to, to get more information uh, out, of my, uh, out of these three projects and monitor my portfolio. So that's another, uh, another approach uh, which you can use. 
And there is one more approach, which is a bit more complicated, but um, it works similar to what we've done so far. So if we would like to have our date, this structure resembled uh, in the overview module, then let's go back to the overview module and uh, start adding uh, sub boxes. Well, I can do, I, I would not do that using the program type. I would use one of the other, um, other out of the box, box types available. Uh, let's go with the program increment. Now, uh, of course I can rename the program increment, um, uh, other names, but, uh, at this level I would have my project. So let's call this project, uh, a, for example. This project A, okay, let's set some start and end dates, project A and maybe also project B. Okay, again, if you want to, if you, if you don't like this um, terminology, you can always uh, change it in the, um, uh, in the administration, maybe let's do that. So let's go to administration, box types, uh, program increments, and instead of program increment, I would rename it to project, project, product, uh, however you want to call it. Okay, so right now, if we go back to our portfolio box, you will see that the type has changed to project uh, or product. Now, these are the project A and B are sub boxes of the portfolio US box and they do not allow you to define their own scope. So how, what can we do? How can we configure that? So that our data is organized uh, properly. If we go to the configuration, I can right click here, uh, use this right click dialog, go directly to the configuration of the portfolio in the tasks and scope definition uh, on the scope definition page you will notice that the, uh, that the project A and B were added as uh, sub boxes here. Now, how can we, um, how can we assure that data from project A, let's say my project A would be my ongoing agile project is correctly displayed in this particular project. Why, first of all, why would I do that? I would, I would want to organize my, uh, my work in such a way that the project manager, for example, for this project, when, when he accesses this box, he can only see this particular project, nothing else. Of course, as big picture does um, respect uh, all the permission settings, this can be handled by, 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 by permission or security settings within Jira. As a user, I would not see anything in big picture. If I, I would not see the hybrid project, for example, if I don't have access to it. But um, let's assume that we just want to organize our work. So how can we do that? Right now we can sync uh, the project A to a selected, uh, uh, selected type of field. These are currently limited to sprint, select this uh, dropdown, or a text field. I would, I would be using a text field. I do have this program increment field. It's a standard text field. However, it is added during the installation. I don't want to change this uh, at this moment. And I would, um, uh, I would add this project, uh, project a field value. So what's happening now? What am I, what have I, uh, what have I set here? Whenever any issue from this, all of this scope has this project A value for, uh, in the program increment uh, field, it will be displayed in this particular box. Okay. So now let's add some issues to this, uh, project A box. We can do it uh, using different modules. I will use the Gantt module. And if I expand here, expand my Epic here, I've already added the program increment field to this, to this um, table. Uh, now text fields are inline editable. So whenever I type this synchronized value project A, now big picture will, will use this value to actually display items in the 
project A. So let's have a look at the Gantt chart of project A. Okay, so the tasks uh, are loaded and as you can see, uh, let me adjust the timeline here. I'm, uh, I'm able to see my tasks uh, with the field value project A, uh, while the parent tasks that are not in scope of this box, but there are still parent tasks, are shaded out gray and I cannot edit these tasks. If I want to do that, I would be required to do that in the upper level box in other words, in my portfolio. Uh, this approach uh, has this one uh, main advantage that you can fully utilize the potential of big picture, meaning, for example, that you can go to the box configuration and, and manage uh, all the settings um, adjusted to your needs. So, for example, have if you have Big Picture Enterprise, rename the modules, you can change the um, column views, add your own, which will not be necessarily uh, passed on down uh, from the upper level boxes. And on top of that, you can also manage the security by assigning users or groups to security roles. Also in the overview module, you will only see this particular project and all the sub boxes such as the project phases or PIs or uh, iterations. Also uh, in the home screen you will be able to actually have an overview of all your projects, all your products or your initiatives uh, in one place which is very convenient for the, uh, for, from the resource management perspective because you will see the actual workload of all your resources. Okay, so that's it for uh, this tutorial. Uh, if you would like to know more, make sure to visit our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.